Actually, back in 1988, uh, there was a hearing, a Senate hearing in Congress, in which a NASA scientist named James Hansen pronounced the greenhouse effect was, the enhanced greenhouse effect, was warming the planet. And, and part of the issues that were happening that summer, a severe drought and so on, were related to that. <laughs> Scratching. We were very suspicious of the data set being used, which was a surface temperature data set. And these are just a collection of odd assortments of thermometers over land and, uh, and ships at sea, which are very sparse. And a collection of those came up with a number that showed an increase in temperature. And so we wondered, is there a way to get a systematic temperature of the planet? And also a temperature that was not just right at the surface of the Earth, but really was the bulk atmosphere. That's where the greenhouse effect is supposed to be happening the most. So from the surface to, say, uh, five miles up, where jet aircraft fly. If you're flying in a jet aircraft, look down to the ground, and all that air in between you is where the greenhouse effect is supposed to be most dominant. Well. Roy Spencer, who is now a UAH scientist, he was a NASA scientist at that time, knew about the microwave sounding units, which was a, uh, a instrument that measured the heat that oxygen gives off in the microwave spectrum. Very uh, good, robust measurement of temperature. And it turns out there's a lot of oxygen in the air, and so there was a way to measure the temperature. And so using this instrument, which is orbiting the Earth every day, the whole Earth, we are able to get an entire picture of temperature for the entire planet systematically and through time. So we put together all the satellites and, and published that story, and, and the story was the temperature is not rising as fast as what the surface temperature shows and uh, what theory uh, as we knew it about greenhouse gases at the time was showing. And so, uh, now through the years, we've learned some things about these instruments and have had to make corrections. Uh, we've made most of them. A few other people have looked at our data and found some problems that we've corrected again. And uh, uh, the wonderful thing, or I guess the comforting thing about the data set we've produced is that we can compare it independently to other measurements of temperature. And these are by balloons. Now, you can a balloon carries a thermometer, and when it's released and goes into the atmosphere, it radios back what the temperature is. So we can see the temperature from the balloon for that deep layer, as well as from the satellite looking down completely independently. And this has been a way to check our satellite work at the various spots around the Earth where balloons are to show that uh, the data set we produce here is, is highly consistent with those, and therefore we have confidence for the global measurement as well. So, and what we found over the past 28 years now, 29 years of data that we have from these balloons, begin in late 1978, is that uh, the temperature is rising, it's erratic, but the rate of rise is less than what climate models project, about 60 percent, in fact. So, there could be an enhancement of the greenhouse effect that affects temperature, uh, but if it is, it's not nearly as dramatic as what uh, the media promotes about this. And we like to look at numbers, the hard numbers of what the climate is doing. We don't see these catastrophic changes happening.